Hey everyone, this is Sam and welcome to my Persona 5 Strikers Advanced Tips. In today's video, we'll be heading into level 50 plus personas. I call these the endgame personas and what you're going to see me build for you today is truly some of the best of the best personas that is available in this game in their final form. You can see with this Saravati personas, you can easily heal yourself and the rest of your teammates and you will get triple buff in every fight and combined with the Hector, you'll be able to keep these buffs through criticals for the rest of the fight no matter how long it lasts. I cannot wait till I show you guys how to build these two personas. So if you would like to see more persona builds from me, especially for lower levels or higher levels but down the line, you can click on the card above or the playlist in the description below for more persona builds playlists. And if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe and like if you want to see more persona tutorials and other RPG videos from me. So let's begin by looking at the Saravati endgame build and this is how you want to do it. So the first persona you want to build to get to the perfect Saravati, you want to take a Eligo and a Principality and build a Mitra. Now the Principality needs to be this specific one. So go to my Persona's playlist, Principality video for this specific build. And the key skill you want to carry over is uh, Divine Grace. The rest actually don't really matter. So when you build this Mitra, just make sure you carry over Divine Grace, all right? And then you want to take this Mitra, combine it with any regular Mothman and build a Nico Shogun. And the skills, once again, you want to transfer over, it's really up to you. The other three don't matter, but make sure you transfer over Divine Grace. That is an absolute must. And then you want to level up this Nico Shogun to level 42, so he gets Speed Master. So Speed Master and Divine Grace are the keys here, okay? And then you're going to build another Persona out of that Nico Shogun. You're going to combine him with any regular Naga, and you're going to build a Arahabaki. And with this Arahabaki, you want to level him up to level 44 and also you want to make sure you transfer over the skill Divine Grace and Speed Master. So by level 44, you will have Divine Grace, Speed Master and Defense Master. And then you take this Arabaki at level 44 and combine it with a Valkyrie to make the Suravati. But the Arabaki is the one you just made. And then the Valkyrie, make sure when you do the fusion, you want to level her up to level 46 so she gets Attack Master. That's what you need from the Valkyrie. And in the end, your Saravati is going to come with Defense Master, Speed Master, Attack Master, and Divine Grace. Which means if you start every encounter in this game with the Saravati, you will be triple buff with Defense, Speed, and Attack. So you can see here, I have the Saravati in my party. I start the fight and I have Defense up, Critical Evasion up, and I have Attack up. So now I have all three of these up that lasts for 30 seconds. And the best part of the Saravati is... One of her combos, combo number one, if you go square, 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 triangle, which is relatively fast, but she casts a Meteorama, which is a high level healing spell with Divine Grace that heals you and your whole team. So you want to combine this Hector build to perfectly complement the Saravati. So you want to make a Mothman and a Jack Frost into a Shiza. And the Shiza you make doesn't matter what skills it carries over. What you have to do is you have to level this Shiza up to level 40 so he gets technical high. So once you have this Shiza at level 40 with technical high, you can combine him with any regular Mothman, it's fine. Take the Shiza, combine him with a Mothman, and once again, make sure you carry over technical high. Dodge physical, dodge curse, they don't really matter, but the key here is technical high. Make sure that carries over. You're going to take this Unicorn now, that you just made the Shiza with, combine it with a Kobatengu to make the Hector. Uh, the Kobatengu needs to be this specific one, and you can see how to build this. Uh, go to my playlist and look at the Okunushi video and you'll see how to make this specific Kobatengu build. The skills you want to carry over is Gun Boost, One Shot Kill, Technical Adapt, and Technical High. So this is going to give you crazy gun damage and the ability to keep all of your buffs if you do a critical hit because of Technical High. And you're going to level this Hector up to at least level 48 as soon as possible. So you also get Endure. So that what Endure does is if you're using the Hector and you run out of help, you get one HP back and survive the lethal hit. So combo number one from Hector is absolutely key. It's square, 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 triangle. If you do that, your Hector is actually going to do a swift strike, which has the ability and chance to trigger a critical, which because you have technical high, it's going to allow you to keep all the buffs that the Saravati just gave you. So you can see the duel in action here. I begin the fight with the Saravati, who is pretty much the key healer, and the key buffer of my team. 
She's going to give me the triple buff. I'm going to come with the attack up, the defense up, and the critical and the evasion up. So this is going to be perfect synergy to go into the Hector. But first, I want to put my enemies asleep. You can do that with the Kikuhime I showed you in the playlist. Then you put the enemies asleep. And you get into your Hector. So now you also get any swift strikes or one shot kill you do, or even the combo attack swift strike. You see, I'm gonna get technical damage with the technical buff. I'm gonna trigger the critical because swift strike has the ability to do that. And that's gonna allow me to keep all those buffs that the Saravati gave me. So you can see for the entirety of this fight, I'm gonna put my enemies asleep. I'm gonna switch to the Hector and give them the swift strike or the one shot kill if I want to. But you can tell that. I am keeping all of my buffs. The attack, defense, and agility are all up from the Saravati. You can see I'm triggering plenty of critical hits, which also allows me to trigger some technical hits, which also gives me the technical attack buff, and I can just switch to my gun straight up, because I have gun boost and gun damage buff. So all of this combined makes this absolutely unstoppable through the rest of the game. You'll be able to finish the game with these two builds if you really want. Can you make better builds out of them? Sure, but these two are enough to last the rest of the game. You will actually improve on the Hector down the line with another Persona, but the Saravati is just something you'll keep the rest of the way because she's your healer and she gives you the triple buff. It's very rare to find a Persona that allows you to carry over the triple buff skills and at the same time also gives you the ability to just heal with the buff. Now obviously if you still have the Okinoshi from the previous build like I'm showing you in this fight, you can tell I'm mostly using the uh, Okinoshi here to trigger the Dream Needle and I can still do that. But uh, the key is if you have the Hector, any critical hits you do really, it's gonna extend your buffs by about 10 seconds. You can see in this instance I'm not using any Hector. I can still probably survive the encounter, but if I go into the Hector and I do triple down, see there is the critical attack there, or I do the one shot kill, it's gonna allow me to extend the buffs by a good 10 seconds. So 10 seconds in game, right? So if you trigger the persona manual, those times don't count. And if you use a lot of triple down or one shot kill and your health is lower, you can just switch back to your Saravati. Do that quick combo and you can get all of the heals, like you see what I'm doing here? So really, the health bar is part of my resources and I don't really care if it gets slow. So you can see this in a tougher fight situation. I have the Saravati to begin with. And I go in against this uh, mini boss. And obviously I'm going to try to put him asleep if I can. But if he doesn't go asleep, he probably would because the Hirohime I showed you guys has crazy sleep boost. So after he's, the enemy is asleep, I can simply switch to uh, a Hector. And I can do one shot kill, triple down, or I can just trigger the combo if I want. So that saves me a little bit of help. Or I can do the Dream Needle from the Okinoshi. Granted, the Dream Needle is not going to extend my buffs, but I don't need to do that all the time right? because the Dream Needle costs less health, so I can do that, keep my health still relatively high, to use the Hector when I need to extend my buffs. Because the initial buffs that the Saravani gives me is going to last 30 seconds. So keep a mental, good mental clock with yourself. That's key. As you realize you're getting closer to the buffs running out, then you can do the Hector, try to trigger the critical attacks, and extend these buffs further. But you can see I'm just wasting this enemy away just with the Dream Needles. And then I'm going to switch over to the Hector to finish her up because I want to extend my buffs because I'm running low on health. So I do the Swift Strike. And I don't care if I have very little health with the Hector right? because I've Endure. So if I run out of health as the Hector, I'm not going to lose the fight. I'll just come back on one health and I can heal myself. Alright, so hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you got any questions, leave it in the comment section. As always, thanks for coming by, and I look forward to speak to you guys again very soon.